doesn't make a difference at all if a horse has his or her spring shots early or late in spring. Does it affect the way he is going to respond to the shots or anything else? Wow, she's really put some thought into these because honestly, in all my years, that had never occurred to me. Okay. So I, I made a list of the things that I think about when I'm trying to figure out when to give my spring okay. shots. Okay. So now we have to consider the U.S. Equestrian's six-month rule, mm -hmm. the vaccination rule, because you have to give the flu and rhino or the influen equine influenza and EHV-1 um, rhino pneumonitis within six months of entering a horse show facility. Mm -hmm. And U.S. Equestrian, new name for USEF, United States Equestrian Correct. Foundation. I'm, I'm trying to be very good and use the new name. Yes. So I know that my last show is October 14th. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to give my spring shots until April 14th. Okay. If I can help it. Mm -hmm. So that's one consideration. Another one is, am I in compliance with colic care guidelines? Okay. There's a lot of horses in that program and it says work with your veterinarian, have your veterinarian administer vaccinations. Um, if it's been a long time and I'm going to go out of compliance, mm -hmm. if I wait a few months, I might give them earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. Don't forget though, about half of the vaccines we routinely give, the core vaccines and some of the at risk, are because of insects that spread diseases, mm -hmm. West Nile, um, e Eastern and Western equine encephalomyelitis. So you don't want to give those in the non-mosquito season. Right. Like there's, there would be, there'd be no reason in, uh, say, the northern climates, uh, Minnesota, Massachusetts, to give West Nile in January mm -hmm. because there's no mosquitoes January, February, March, maybe April. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, t I tend to time those just before the critters are going to come out. And when you give a vaccine, it takes about two weeks okay. to affect if it's a booster and not a primary, Okay. which is another thing I think about. I want this horse to be protected at a certain time. If it's a booster, then it's about two weeks at a time. But if it's an initial series and you're giving a shot every, say, three weeks, it might take a month or two then to reach peak protection. Okay. So then I want to back up. If a horse, if you don't know your horse's history and you don't know if it had vaccines previously, how long roughly can a horse go between, like if he missed his booster for a couple of years, is there a point where it resets and then he doesn't have that primary we anymore? We don't know that. That's an under-researched area. Okay. We don't know the answer to that. There are a few equine diseases like rabies mm -hmm. that we have the ability to take a titer on. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you protection as much, like function, functionality. They just tell you, does your horse have antibodies to this mm -hmm. at a level that should be protected. Mm -hmm. But So it's an area that needs more, more research in it. Other things I think about, oh, this is what I'm thinking about right now. Is there a clinic show or other event? that I want my horse to be protected at, yet not sore for. Mm. So if, if I'm giving these injections almost anywhere, the neck, very common area, the, the hips, um, I tend to give mine in the pectoral muscles, the chest muscles, because mm -hmm. um, they're very low. So if there's a problem, the any swelling goes to the low point and they're very easy to drain there. But also the front legs are constantly moving and working that area. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice place to give um, vaccinations. But I've got a clinic coming up and I don't want to give a vaccine within about two weeks before that mm -hmm. in case there's an adverse event or soreness. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Newman appreciates that. Yeah. He, he, likes probably to, he likes to feel his best. Never get vaccines would be his. <laughs> um, and I think about is my horse one of a special population like a broodmare. They have very specific vaccination needs. Foals, um, a horse that's rescued and maybe not the healthiest senior horses have special needs. So those are the questions I asked myself. Um, not really the ones she did, but I think it's a good way to get started in the conversation. And this is a conversation you should absolutely have with your veterinarian because they know what's endemic to your area of the country. For example, I've never vaccinated a horse for botulism because we don't have that where I practiced but in some parts of the country, it is rampant. Mm -hmm. So your vet will know that. 